Wendy Wizard is amazing. She has 86 parrots and cockatoos of nearly every variety. She cooks perfectly blended meals for them twice a day. She personally cleans every cage, sometimes twice a day. The food and water in their cages is changed three times a day. Wendy has cages indoors for sleeping and outside cages for their daily dose of sun. What amazes me about Wendy is that she's able to train each parrot and socialize them every single day. Wendy weighs each bird, takes extensive notes on their condition, checks their poop several times a day, and has every detail recorded on her computer. This information is shared over the internet with her primary care avian veterinarian. She does all this and holds down a regular job too. Ms. Wizard does it all. She never puts circumstances in her own life before the needs of her birds in her care. Wendy Wizard never fails to accomplish the tasks of the day. Wendy Wizard doesn't exist. She is pure fiction. No one can do everything just right where parrots are concerned. It is not just the amount of work involved and the level of dedication that makes it so. We don't have the information at hand to do the job. Science has made strides in the last few decades, but they are limited. There is little funding for projects that involve studying parrots. There is no financial payoff for conducting research on parrots. So, if there was a Ms. Wizard or a Mr. Wizard, they would not have all the facts that they needed to care for birds. They would make mistakes because of our ignorance, the ignorance of the human race. How ignorant are we? Most of the research on psychology that has been done is summarized in the book, The Manual of Parrot Behavior. The study of their physiology can be found in the Basava Manual for Citizen Birds, and also in clinical avian medicine. What strikes you after studying these books is how little we know. Although there is a wealth of information in these scientific tomes, the holes in our knowledge are obvious to any discerning reader. There is no cure for citizen beak and feather disease, no cure for PDD, no psychiatric drugs developed solely for citizens. Clinical studies have proven that flighted birds who are raised by their parents, for example, do not suffer from many of the functional misbehaviors that we see in captive birds. This study was done on only one species, though. The funding for future studies with other species will probably not appear. Limited funds limit our knowledge. If parrots had landed from outer space, we would probably know more about them. The world would want those answers. Another problem is that Wendy Wizard would be a predator. We humans have problems internalizing the needs of prey animals. We find it difficult to understand why a corner spot in a room provides a sense of security to a parrot. We don't understand the urge to fly away from danger. We are stuck in the lives where the danger of losing our jobs and relationships is a daily worry. We live in this and believe it to be a normal way of life. Parrots would choose to fly away from problems at once. Our preoccupation with survival is foreign to them. They live out their lives in the forests as they have for hundreds of millions of years. Like juvenile delinquent sun worshippers, they greet the day and squawk at its passing. They live as a community, the poem Cockatoo and the Eclectus are exceptions, that keeps them safe and gives their lives meaning. They own their world. We must trudge off to work to pay the bills and leave them imprisoned for their safety. Wendy Wizard would not have time to train 86 birds a day. That comes out to over 14 hours in training alone at 10 minutes per bird. We hear clocks ticking in our mind. 
Time to do this. Time to do that. Running out of time. I don't have time for you now. These consume us. Birds don't see life in that way. They live each moment and milk it for everything they can get. The bonds of affection in our world are weak. Divorce rates are over 50%. In their world, commitment is understood and honored. There is not a parrot or cockatoo in the world that would not die for its mate, and that includes human mates. Because of our limitations, our care for our companions will also be limited. We will need to give them less than what they deserve. At times, we will need to rush out the door to some urgency that only a human could feel. At times, we will be sick or too tired to carry out all the duties that make a parrot's life a relatively happy one. What do we do when we are not able to perform all of our duties? That's a good question to ask yourself. Establishing priorities is the practical way to handle this. For example, when choosing between changing the water and changing the food, water is the clear winner there. Bacteria grows amazingly fast in water. Food will get stale and mold will begin to form during the day. Where food is concerned, when pressed, you can sprinkle some new food over old and change the bowls when you get home. This should not be a common practice, though. If you can organize your life better, then you will rarely need to cut corners. The corners that you do cut will be well planned when emergencies arise. One example of a time saver is changing the paper and cleaning the cage at night. This gives you the opportunity to make the morning routine go faster. If the paper looks too soiled in the morning, you can quickly change it because you've cleaned it the night before. If you have so many errands that you end up getting home late, then let your bird stay up late with you for a while. If they are used to going to bed earlier, do not let that be your guide. Social interaction is more important than sleep in this case. Again, this should not be a habit. They do need, we think, 10 to 12 hours of sleep regularly. Because they have hemispheric sleep, only one side of their brain goes to sleep at a time, this actually might not be as necessary as we think it is. But without proper companionship, they will fall into psychosis or neurosis. Training your bird for 10 minutes a day should not be a problem. If it is, then do it three or four times a week, but be as consistent as possible. This is precious time with your bird. You can plan to do it seven days a week, but settle for three or four when the world comes knocking at your door, taking your time. Educating yourself about citizens is important. I cannot stress this enough. Without learning about our winged friends, we will certainly make more mistakes. I suggest you start with the Manual for Parrot Behavior. You should also find time to read the books on our suggested list. Visiting the Chloe Sanctuary on YouTube is a great way to learn, too. Even with just one bird, Wendy Wizard would fall short of the ideal. We will fall short. What is important is that we do so consciously. If we are aware of our failings, then we focus on what is most important and see that we do the best that we can under our circumstances. The worst thing that we can do is to say, I will do better tomorrow, when in fact we do not know that we can. This is little more than wishful thinking at times. Be honest with yourself. Plan your time wisely. Be sure to honestly evaluate what you can do and set your priorities based on the real needs of your parrot or cockatoo. Think health and safety first and social interaction a close second. If at first you don't succeed, then reevaluate and plan again. Wendy did everything herself. The truth is that without the assistance of others, we will be unable to carry out our daily chores. Even the most dedicated person needs friends and supporters on their side. There are times when we will need hands and hearts to help us with our flock. You will never be a wizard. Face that fact. Do not hide from your shortcomings. Plan for those days when your best intentions are thwarted by circumstances. Knowing the priorities for your bird's welfare will help you make the right choices. 
To quote a line from Terms of Endearment, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Make both a best case scenario and a worst case one. You will feel better about yourself and your winged companion will be happier that you did. Science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. The Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a non-profit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness.